has been a fat minute. I mean, you guys are used to it. No, like nice a week no uploads. This time I actually have a valid excuse. Um, this is like the first uh, first message of the video. If you can't get enough of me, if you can't get enough of my voice, if you're if you're like a nice nice pedophile and you can't get enough of this child voice, if that's you, I have the ultimate solution for you. Uh, go over to the channel in the description. It's my boy Doc. Which most of you guys are probably already sub to him. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine, and I upload uh, guest uploads of ADV narrations on his channel from uh, World Cup right now. So if you like ADV, aka Gen Three, uh, or if you just like my nice <laughs> sounds in general, then uh, that might be something for you. But going into this match versus Frog and the Heracross Heroes. This man's team is looking kind of scary, not really too scary, because most of his biggest threats like Alakazam and Hydreigon are checked or hard countered by Metagross and Clefable in this case. Um, Salastila can be a really, really annoying defensive threat, to be honest, and Amoongus uh, too. Like, he has he has some annoying defensive threats, but not really on the offense. Uh, shit like Ms. Magus could actually be quite a problem to my team, but I don't think he'll bring it just because Lipart has like one speed above it and it's kind of like a C team, but Ms. Magus actually kind of crushes this team. But I expect him not to bring it. This is kind of a risky strategy. I normally I don't do this shit, but I don't know. I just did it this week. <laughs> um, but I uh, got that the Gliscor action as well. Gliscor is really checked by my slow bro. So let's just dive right into this prep. Uh, we got Metagross with AV. This is the uh, resident Mega Alakazam counter of the team. So we got this Thunder Punch Zen Headbutt Pursuit Bullet Punch action. Uh, we got Thunder Punch with Zen Headbutt to co edge coverage to hit his entire team at minus Hydreigon. Now, I couldn't really do anything else about this because I need Thunder Punch to hit Celesteela because that boy's a bit too much of a defensive threat. I can't let Medic I can't let it wall Metagross as well. Then I need Zen Headbutt just to hit his entire team for like some solid damage and uh, to hit a Moongus with super effective damage. Because if I go with Meteor Mash, I can't really hit Rotom Wash and I don't want that either. Then I need Pursuit for the Mega Alakazam. And then it was either Bullet Punch or Meteor Mash, just with a toss up. But with Bullet Punch, I always beat Mega Alakazam. But with Meteor Mash, I could actually touch Hydreigon. But Hydreigon is beat by my Clefable anyway, so I decided to go with Bullet Punch. Then the next Pokemon on my team is going to be Big Nefable. So this is a set you would find in OU as well. So mm, just nice classic, except for it's not uh, it's not fit up, it's spit up to help check the Hydreigon. In case he's like uh, Specs or if he's, I think uh, Flash Cannon to Z Flash Cannon could be an issue as well. I think this is enough to um, eat two Flash Cannons from Specs, I'm pretty sure, like always. Uh, which is uh, obviously really juicy. Now we got that knockoff Rock Score. Knockoff is just to cripple the Amoongus or the Celesteela if they want to come in. I don't know why he would go Celesteela. It could cripple defensive Delphox as well. If it's like leftovers, I can uh, knock those shits off. Or any other I can, item, I can knock that shit off as well. Pretty standard shit though. Uh, next Pokemon is Oblivious Slowbro because I am a noob idiot. And uh, I didn't double check the abilities. I double check EV spreads, moves, uh, items and everything. Make sure I don't forget anyth anything. Uh, one thing I don't double check, I uh, mean normally I do, but this time I didn't, is a regenerator on a Slowbro, so... Ah, they call me Nuberich. Um, how I am, like, a nice oblivious, I cannot be taunted. I really hope this, like, worked out. That would have been, like, amazing. But yeah, we got Scald Psychic, Ice Beam, basically some standard check, and I got Dual Stab, because that actually hits this team pretty well, and plus Ice Beam to hit uh, Among Us for super effective damage. That is actually a lie, because the Psych already does that, but... Uh, Ice Beam hits Gliscor for super effective damage, is basically what I was trying to get at. Because uh, Scald cannot burn it, obviously, if it has the Toxic Orb activated. And, yeah, I don't know. Ice Beam is, like, Scald's gonna do more if he starts spamming Roost, but Ice Beam does, like, 80 to Gliscor, 80 to uh, 100, depends on investment. And, uh, yeah. But mostly, Ice Beam is there for the High Dragon, because otherwise, I can't hit that for shit. Shit like the Roar and Wash, I could just chip down with Psychic and Scald away on it. I don't know what this uh, investment spread is um, designed to do, but because that's because I'm a quality YouTuber and I don't. Boy, we don't fuck around. I think it has something to do with the Toxic Rook, though. <laughs> that's the only thing I know. I think it has something to do with the Toxic Rook. But yeah, the Slowbro is a huge defensive issue, especially if it had Regenerator. Because it can beat Toxic Rook, it can beat Delphox if it doesn't have Grass, not CM. It can kind of check Alakazam, sort of. It can kind of check Amoongus. I mean, it doesn't really, because it, we both hit each other with super effective damage. Uh, so it doesn't really check that. It can check the Celesteel, it can burn that shit. Uh, it can beat the Gliscor straight up. So just looking at the Slowbro is a really big pain in the ass, but <laughs> ooh, not like this. Uh, now the next Pokemon on the team is our resident Amoongus. Check with that Goggles on deck. Uh, rocking this three attacks plus Dragon Tail, because they didn't really know what to put. Uh, so if I have the rocks up, I can always just Dragon Tail them. I'll get some extra veteran chip. Got dual stab, and we don't really need anything else. Outside of Thunderbolt to hit the Celesteel, so I just slept on Dragon Tail. We got this max investment. We got enough speed to. Uh, I think I just slapped some speed in there just to make sure Moongus doesn't speed creep me. I just I just went a, kind of a bit overboard, but I ain't, I ain't trying to have that piece of shit and bitch mono speed me, because I need to be able to spam Sludge Blades. Next Pokemon on the team is Big Lopini, uh, rocking this Return Fake Out Thunder Punch Healing Wish coverage, because I really don't need High Jump Kick in this matchup. Looking at his team. Um, like, High Jump Kick doesn't hit anything, because his only normal resist is hit super effectively by Thunder Punch. 
And the rest is just almost all smacked by return. So Mega Lapney is an amazing matchup outside of defensive Gramble, which I definitely expect him to bring. Uh, and Mega Alakazam obviously outspeeding me and revenging me, but I can uh, trap it with Alakazam. Oh, I can trap it with Alakazam, hello. <laughs> I can trap it with Metagross. And outside of that, I can obviously have some Scarfers. But uh, Scarfers like shit, like Scarf Buffalon, I don't think outspeeds me because Mega Lapney is a fast boy. Obviously, I can't hit Buffalon for super effective damage now and Hydreigon, but I think that's fine because Healing Witch is going to be super nice. Because you got some of these mods without recovery, like Jagaji, Metagross, uh, Landorus, and even <laughs> Slowbro. I mean, I have Slack off, but outside of that, mm, I don't regen. But uh, yeah, we got Fake Out on deck as well. In case he still has his uh, Scarfer or like Mon has set up with Agility, I don't think any of his Mons do get that. But uh, I don't know, it's just it's just like a nice safety net to have. Fake Out's always juicy, I don't really know what to put here. Um, looking at like what other moves... I was thinking about it. I could have just put HJK here as well or Power Up Punch, but I just decided to go with Fake Out. Now, the next Pokemon on the team is going to be the Powerhouse. This is the last one. This is the Beast. This is Gravity Landers making a return right here. Uh, actually, I don't think Gravity Landers has come. I think it was Gravity Gigalith last time. So, yeah, this is the second time we bring Gravity. This time on the Landers with Gravity, EQZ, Fly, HP, Ice, Coverage. Now, EQZ, Fly, molests his team. Looking at his team, you see that Celestia, you see that Rotom Wash. You see those are two of his ground resist. You see uh, literally, like, every single ground resist here outside of Hydreigon, gets smacked by either Earthquake or um, HP Ice, because this man's Grass-type is an Amoongus. Uh, obviously, that can slurp up EQs, but it's going to get popped by Z-Fly. Hydreigon is going to get popped by Z-Fly. Gliscor is going to get popped by Z-Fly. This thing is almost guaranteed to get at least one kill. HP Ice also does shits on the Gliscor, although if it's like a really, really fast one, uh, actually, uh, that, that, even that doesn't outspeed me, so I could just start spamming HP Ice, go wild on this poor kid. And yeah, that's what it's there for. It can obviously have Ice Fang, so you can uh, tank one because I am minus special attack nature. You can definitely tank one, then Ice Fang me and one shot me. But yeah, we're, we're gonna definitely have to scout for that with something like a slow bro. So I kind of went over this prep really fast. That's because this prep is really standard. Looking at all of these sets, like this is something you would uh, you would expect to have against a team with a Zam. This is standard. This is standard. Like all these sets are pretty standard. So I just hop right into the battle with the swiftness of the speed of the light of the uh, not knowing how to talk. So we're gonna hop right into this replay. So looking at my man's team, he does not have the Gramble on deck. That means Lopini is gonna tear uh, like a hole through his team. He does have like the the standard boys I expected him to bring. Looking at his team, Landers is a big threat, although he does have the Hydreigon, which can definitely tank one Earthquake. And this man wiped out literally every single ground resist on his team, which is kind of scary. So let's uh, hop right into this. Uh, he leads off with the Amoongus. I lead off with Big Neffable trying to get these rocks up. Easy mode, but uh, yeah, I, I can't let the shit go to I can't let the shit go to sleep or to paralyze. So he stun spores me on the safety goggles. I drop a fat Draco knowing that this will e uh, either do some fat damage like Gliscor or uh, get a kill. But uh, yeah, or or he could go Celestia, but then at least I get some chip off. And I know Celestia, he wants to switch in Celestia. I didn't really feel comfortable going for hard T-Wall because I don't want to reveal that. Although it's pretty obvious I would have that. Um, and if he goes Gliscor, it doesn't do shit. And this does like 10 million, even if he roosts up here. It still puts him in range of the next Draco, and Gliscor is not going to be switching, so the next time I can T bolt. So I switch this in, I go for the Skull, try to fish for burn on either Amoongus or the Rotom. Unfortunately, do not get it. Here I stay in thinking I have Regenerator, so this damage is kind of doesn't matter, so I can regen it off later. I can just fish for burns on the Amoongus and the Rotom. Um, yeah, here I need to get the fuck out of there. I think I just go back into Dragology. I don't really have another play. So he doubles, makes a really good double, and doubles into a Hydreigon trying to catch me there. Um, I do have a Cleffable, so this is going to get walled pretty hard. He drops a Draco, which is a play I don't really understand. I think u was always a play there. He uses the turn after getting some veteran ship off. Goes hard into his Celestia as I get at my rocks. Uh, now here, if I was a wild boy, I could have knocked off here. <laughs> as I go into my slow bro, um, as here I realize, oh yeah, fuck, I don't have Regenerator, so I'm mega shook. I think I uh, slack off here, predicting the Protect. Really goatee play on my end, because I really am the greatest to ever do it. So here, uh, he's just going to switch it into a Moongus or Rotom. I'm just going to fire off a Fat Skull, trying to get the burn on either one of them. Uh, just because I'm yeah, just because I'm trying to get these burns, I'm trying to make this water a bit nicer. I could have also Psychic there. I think Psychic, honestly, in hindsight, I think Psychic was a, a kind of a better play, but then if you stayed in, I was in a really bad spot. But Psychic covered the Moongus, I would have done some hefty damage to it, but I could have regen that off anyway. Now we're going to Pearl, take a solid... There's like a slot like 4% because Pearl is thick. Uh, he Giga Drains again trying to predict the double, I think, as a Dragon Tail. Because, uh, I mean, that actually works out for him. Actually, I don't know if he was predicting the double. As we can uh, yeah, as you see the Giga Drain come off. But I don't know if he was predicting the double. He might have just wanted to stay in with the Moongus attack and he hit. But I don't agree with that play necessarily. Because Sludge Wave 2 a KO from that range. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, I don't really agree, agree with that play. I drag until I'm out into Hydreigon, so that's really bad for me. He's just gonna U-turn. I didn't know it, but we ain't trying to make like we ain't trying to sack our only Amoongus answer. So it goes back to Gliscor. I uh, trying to get Gliscor a bit more healthy. Good play on my opponents. And because now I can switch into Drugology again. I'm forced back into Slowbro. 
as he lights up his rocks. Uh, so the Discord is still. Actually, never mind. I was. Uh, what, am, what am I saying? Discord is always in range of Draco because of rocks. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Uh, I really, I really am a retard. So I'm gonna get this scald up, trying to get some burns before I start spamming psychic. But the water is not hot today, so quite unfortunate. Going to Dragology. As this, I think he pulls a double again. He pulls a double into Gliscor right here, uh, making a really solid play. So this is kind of a shit position for me. I'm forced back into slow, bro. This is basically just these same mons facing around. Here's your Ice Fangs. Which is a play I don't. I, I mean, I get it. He's trying to cover the Lando with no sane person goes Lando there. <laughs> if he would have got me with that, he would have like leaving me shook. But he EQs up here, as he just takes this ice beam right to the dome and takes about 90 from that. So uh, this is really bad for him. He roosts up here, but my scald is more than roost. But I ice slack off. Now he, even if he like if he starts attacking, he loses shit on the ice beam again. So he goes into road him here. As I fire off a scald predicting that, uh, as we try to get the burn, we finally do get the burn on the Rotom this time. So that's really hot. Here he's just gonna Volt Switch. Uh, I'm just gonna try to slack off on the Volt Switch, but he actually Willow Wisps, uh, which is the good play because it covers the Lando. It covers it basically covers everything. I don't really have a Volt Switch switch in because I don't want Dragology taking the Volt Switch plus the chip. So I'm just gonna chip him down with Ice Beam here. Um, I know he has Pain Split, so he's gonna Pain Split up on this. This is basically a, like <laughs> this is a really boring scenario. Just two bulky fat waters facing off. I know that when he Volt Switches, he he puts me really low because of no regenerator, uh, really biting me in the ass here. So he Willow Wisp keeps trying to catch my play uh, as I keep slacking off trying to catch the Volt Switch. So this is some nice boring. Uh, I mean boring. What am I saying? This is some nice quality content. I see like one fat water. I see two of them. Like hello, what is this? So I psychic him, chip him in range. Uh, one of these turns, I tried to pull the trigger here. I do pull the trigger on this turn. Thought it was a turn later, but ha! Uh, he actually will wisps here. I assumed he would pain split and only do a bit of chip. But he actually will wisp me, which really sucks because Pearl's getting chipped. I don't have the leftovers uh, at all. So he volts, which just me does some more chip. So we take like 30 chip in total. He goes into Celesteela, which is pretty obvious. I tabled that, predicting that because I'm really good and I get roll water for this play. Now, this is uh, Celesteela was a huge defensive threat, and this really, really sucks for my opponent. Like. I think this is what like really swayed the match in my favor. That that 10% chance, 10% chances from T Bolt, uh, flamethrower, and Ice Beam should be removed from the game 100%. These moves are already really good. 90 base power, 100% accuracy is already amazing. Um, this should get removed. So yeah, I get that. <laughs> like that's super. Uh, I mean, I didn't get any of the Scald burns. Uh, almost any. I I got one at the end, but I tried to Draco covering the uh, Gliscor pivot because I thought I, I, like he's he was either gonna protect or pivot into Gliscor. So I T Bolt here as I get the full power like. What is this? This is some fat luck, dude. This is actually quite insane. So we're gonna he's gonna tech up trying to burn stall a bit. As I Draco, I think he I can I think I can just Draco again. Yeah, I can just Draco again here because it's uh, I, I made some expert calculations and it does kill. So we pull up another Draco. That would cover the Gliscor play as well. Now here you can just go into Alexam and claim one, but I'm just gonna let Pearl die so we can safely chop the shit with Metagross. Because I ain't trying to switch a Metagross into a Shadow Ball and uh, actually not win the one v one. So Metagross, it's Dude, it's Metagross molesting time. He predicts the pursuit here, really good play, and he shadow balls. Does not get the spit off drop, fortunately for me. Uh, he pursues here. Here he makes a questionable play because he recovers. I don't really get that play because now he gets chipped. Like now, like that was a low roll. Now he, now I get the high roll. Obviously, it doesn't matter because I still have bullet punch. But yeah, bullet punch really came in handy if uh, he didn't make that play and I just got a low roll. Bullet punch would have really came in handy because he would have either been dead to bullet punch or to rocks. But yeah, if um. Yeah, if I didn't have Bullet Punch there, I would have gotten some more hacks, but no, no, not today. Uh, so I'm just going to preserve this Metagross as Sack Fodder or just in the back so just to preserve some differential. I don't know yet, but Slowbro's definitely going to come in because Slowbro's the safest Gliscor switch in ever. I need to slack off here because no regen, but he's just going to go into Rotom, take some chip. As here, I find my time to sack off Metagross because I ain't trying to let this Rotom pain split all the way up to focus. This is a big, big, big threat. So this is my time to sack Metagross. Either I sack it off, sack him on up with 10% off, or actually get the player correct and uh, he paints what's up. But he makes a good play and Hydrophone is predicting that. But now, then that was Lopini time and yeah, look at this team, then look at Lopini and oh, a first kill for Lopini is inside. And Lopini basically just goes in from this point. Only Amoongus can uh, hit, eat a hit. I mean, he doesn't know I don't have HJK, but uh, I can go into Luna here, eat up the stun spore and just basically chill here. I can, <laughs> I can knock him off real quick. The Sledge Bomb doesn't do jack shit. I can knock him off, but he can go for some para hacks here, and that is quite scary. This Amoongus is still a huge, huge, huge threat. Uh, he sludge bombs up here. Although, basically, my Lopini and uh, Lander's looking like threats as well, but if he can get some ha reverse hacks, which would be. That would be deserved. So, <laughs> not even a poison on the sludge bomb here, uh, just to rub it in. So, I think I just get a kill here. What, what am I saying? I think I know I just got a kill here. I'm just gonna smash something back with that Z fly. I'm done. Like, I kinda I kinda knew he would go high dragon, but nothing I could have really done aside of just Z flying. Here goes into Gliscor, then pivots into Amoongus uh, on the HPIs. 
which doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to hard normal fly. As I do get the 50-50 right there, as, yeah, this is basically just mega over. So I hit that regular fly right there on the Amoongus. He couldn't even switch into Gliscor. He goes into Gliscor here. I can hit that shit up with that easy HP ice. As it actually <laughs> fails to kill because I get, like, a min-min roll on a spit-off Gliscor. So, um, uh, yeah, he roosts up, which I play I disagree with. I think he should have ice fang to try to get some dif differential. Not that it really matters because it's only for differential. But, yeah, Shelly's going to wrap up this last kill of the, uh, of the week. So we're going to win 4-0. Now, this is all fun and games, but <laughs> this is where the real shit starts. Now, it has only been a few weeks. There's like, uh, we haven't played the full 11 weeks, but there were people dropping out of this league. This league was like way too big, because for the people who don't know, uh, this league is not only 12 people. This league is 24 people. It's two, like, conferences, and they both meet in playoffs. Everyone was dropping out. There were just, like, buys getting handed out everywhere. So for next week, I'm going to get a free pass, and uh, after that, the playoffs is going to start, and this week, the playoffs just got announced, so I'm going to have to prep. And before I prep, I just wanted to get this video out. Also, I just want to get some content out on the Connor series because I've been I've been kind of like ne neglecting you guys. I've only been uh, putting up some content on the Docker YouTube channel, so I'm really I'm really sorry for that. But if you watched at this point, you probably enjoyed the video, so leave a juicy a like. And uh, next week will be a playoffs match versus Insult, and this man has a broken draft, but he also has Mega Alakazam, so you know Big Metagross is gonna come out again with that Insult vs Pursuit attack combination. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Yeah. So. um... Yeah, next next two weeks are gonna be playoffs because you know I'm smashing insult and then I'm gonna smash the next victim too. And we're gonna we win, uh, we're gonna win the first season of the Den Draft League confirmed. This is gonna be the easiest win I've ever seen. This draft is just like broken, so this is about to be a snatch. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs>